my name is Joshua Rosnatsky. Um, I'm currently a PA student uh, in my didactic year. Uh, we're coming towards the end of our second trimester, which is really exciting. Um, got one more left before clinicals. Uh, so I did, before going to PA school, I did a MPH. I uh, did that at University of Albany. Um, it's one of the SUNY schools up in New York. And uh, before that, I was working as a scribe, getting my experience, working as a physical therapy aide, um, really trying to soak it all in, really um, try to learn as much as I could before I got into PA school. You have a lot of different experiences for us to touch on. Um, <laughs> what kind of brought you to the PA profession? Um, so when I was first looking at the PA profession. I didn't know much about it. My dad actually brought it up to me. It was similar to how your story yeah, same. was. <laughs> um, and I I looked it up and I was like, okay, this is similar. I was originally thinking medical school, kind of like the, the, the normal route that usually people would take. Um, and then I started working in the field and I really liked working directly with the patients, you know, having the time to really get to know them as a person because from my perspective, I thought, okay, you're going to have better patient outcomes. If you really get to know your patient, you're able to tailor treatment to them. And I, as I was reading up on the PA profession, um, that's something that I saw they did. And it wasn't, um, and it wasn't so significantly different from going to medical school and becoming a doctor. Um, and to be honest, like I was when I was going and working as a scribe, I was working in urology at the time. And just to see the life of what a physician went through, it was so different to compare to their PA counterparts in the same office. And and there was just something about that that I didn't enjoy as much as what I saw the PAs doing. Interesting. OK, so shadowing or not shadowing, but working actually is kind of where you yeah. got your confirmation or decision there. Okay. So well, I'm going to jump a, like, a little bit ahead and then go back. Um, okay. You took, you went to an MPH program. Was that yeah. to help you to get into PA school or because that's something you have an interest in or a little bit of both? So originally, um, I was looking at PA MPH programs okay. and I thought, I thought originally, okay, I want to have my MPH no matter what. I think that'll be a great addition to eventually working in clinical practice and addressing whatever I would learn as an MPH um, and be able to translate it over. Um, to touch on the getting in part, um, a I mean, I did a little bit, but I didn't so much think that it would be the like the the diamond thing that would get me in it was more of a I want to do this anyway so if I have to take the long road I'll take the long road to go to school mm -hmm. because no matter what it's gonna help me uh in the end okay so it wasn't like you had a very low GPA you were trying to improve or anything I mean I'm sure it boosted it and helped everything yeah. everything helps but um yeah. it was more of of an interest thing. yeah it was more okay. of an interest um i did a my concentration was in biomedical science so i was able to tailor it to more of the things that are like going on right now with covid19 um i was able to learn like all the emerging infectious diseases the different technologies <laughs> how this epidemiology impacts later on how can you do a, just a variety of things that can affect different patient populations um and i think it really helped me as of right now be, being in pa school i think it's really helped me um really connect the two i would say because it's it, there's more to medicine than the uh clinical side and there's a lot of external factors that play a significant role that's interesting because i've i've talked to a couple of people recently who did the combined programs and mm -hmm. they also just had like a very genuine interest in 
public health and involving that in the PA profession. And I think it's okay. cool and a good thing that more programs are focusing on that and offering that because it does, yeah. you know, just make us more well-rounded overall. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So let's jump back a little bit. So walk us through kind of your timeline and your PA school application cycles. Okay. So I applied in 2016, right after I graduated uh, undergrad. And I don't think that was the best idea because I felt I maybe wasted some money (laughs) on that part. Um, And looking back at it, I was not ready. I wasn't mature. I didn't, I don't think I knew exactly where I was going with it. I just knew I wanted to do medicine so bad and wanted to get in and get right to it. But looking back, I definitely was not ready for that. Wasn't ready for PA school. I wouldn't be doing, I wouldn't have done well in PA school. Um, There's definitely a maturity component that comes with it. Uh, And that's something I can definitely advise to some people. If you don't, if you just want to go in there and do it, um, that's great. But I think you got to be mentally ready also. Um, and I think that's, what's been helping me as of right now. Um, so that was the first one I applied to like 12 programs. Um, I heard back and it was rough getting, uh, rejection letters at least twice a month. It it was, it was, it was hard. It was, it was something that I was. I wasn't used to getting rejection after rejection after rejection. And I was waiting for the time that somebody gave me the shot to, to go to school and, and show them I'm ready for this. Um, and I wasn't, I wasn't ready. I, and admissions committee saw that they, 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 they knew. What part um, of your application wasn't ready? I think it was mainly my personal statement. Really, I, I couldn't I couldn't give a legitimate reason for PA like a, a solidified reason for PA school. I really had to I think I had to experience more than there than I had in undergrad or even prior to undergrad. There's just so much more that rounds a person than the the curriculum that you go through as an undergrad. And then we went on to our second, uh, our second time applying. <clears throat> this time I was I was doing my MPH, and at this point uh, I applied to seven programs, and I did a practice interview with you, and that really helped. So um, thank you. And then uh, <laughs> okay. I, also got, I also I also got your book, which was I read that like every night. Um, that really gave me like a how to do the interview, really get in there and like show them who I am as a person to help get in. Um, but even then I was still getting wait lists. I was getting, I got a couple of rejections and I was just getting down on myself. I didn't, I was, I was almost about to say, you know what, maybe PA school wasn't in my cards and almost didn't reapply. Um, which, which was, it was, it was hard to think that. It was something that was very difficult to come to terms with almost. And so I was, I was job searching for uh, things related to public health. And it's a funny story because I was actually on vacation and I hadn't done anything for like three, two, three months. Cause I just graduated from my MPH and I was just applying the jobs. And I was on vacation. I was at the beach and I just got a call one morning and I was like, I don't know this number. I I didn't answer it because I was like, I've gotten spam calls from uh, plenty of places recently. And I was like, all right, we're not going to answer this. And then they left me a voicemail and I was, I was just like, what in the world? So I, so I listened to the voicemail and it was one of my professors saying, Hey, we want to discuss you coming to school. Um, We want to, take you off the wait list and uh that's pretty much it then it was it's pretty much a a decision where i knew where i had to go which was and it was it was it was it was so exciting i was running around the house jumping up and down and (laughs) of course 
I, I called my parents and they were like, what, what, wait, what? They were so confused. They were like, you're really just, and you're really just going to go do this? And I was like, yeah, I'm just going to go do it. It was like two weeks before the semester started. Oh my so gosh. I had to get all the paperwork done, had to find a place to live, like the whole, the whole nine yards. So it wait, was, when did you was, interview? I interviewed in <clears throat> December. Okay. It was December 13th, 2019. Okay. And I got in August. It was like August 1st. Oh my God. We started like two weeks after. That's awesome. Yeah. It was, <laughs> it was my girlfriend wasn't happy about no. it. But, um, that's going to get know, so like, many I, people tons of hope. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's my, that's one of my biggest things that I can tell somebody is like, don't lose hope. Like as many rejection letters as you get, you, you got to keep, keep going, keep your, your positivity there. And, like don't don't discount yourself because somebody's going to give you that chance that you deserve to to be there that is awesome well yeah congrats <laughs> um that's a, a one of my best friends and she was my medical assistant she had a similar thing happen where she got off the wait list and she had a month essentially until school started so it was this oh, okay. really a little bit longer than you but it was it was pretty pretty quick turnaround to get in so wow okay well that's awesome um <laughs> um so then how has school been it's been really good yeah i can't really complain about it it's it's there's one thing i can say is that it's a it's definitely a roller coaster yeah you're you're gonna have your times where you're upside down and you're doing a corkscrew and you don't know which way is up or down and you're just flying through everything um pretty much but i mean it's definitely doable it's definitely doable as long as you manage your time do you really do, you, do you think um how do i phrase this so like you said you matured a lot and felt more ready now do you yeah. think going through the mph program prepared you to handle pa school better than undergrad or they're still just very different you know, I mean, they're different, but I definitely think the coursework put me at the level that you needed to be at for graduate of a graduate level program. Um, it's kind of like you expected you expected to have this type of course load. Like you had to take care of it. You had to be up on your stuff. You had to do the reading, um, and that's just that. That's something that I've learned. Um, definitely need to be up on your stuff for every class, no matter what it is. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the MPH program definitely helped. Like helped I kind of, I had, the, I had the standard that you were to be held at and where you're supposed to be. That I think, I mean, I think anything, it's just PA school is very different and it's hard to explain to someone. Yeah how how different it is and how intense it is and i'm sure people get sick of hearing that um before they actually get to it so yeah it's just tough. and i could definitely say that the mph wasn't as intense as this by far gotcha when you compare the two i had time to if i wanted to sleep in i could sleep in on a weekend or or i had time in the morning before class to just relax it's just not not the case right now yeah so it's definitely it's definitely a, like a if you're going 100 miles an hour on a roller coaster not all the time for all the time so how many people are in your class so we have uh 41 okay it's pretty yeah common kind of mid-size yeah. um okay this question would get you in trouble if you asked in an interview but uh, how many guys and how many girls are in your class? Um, so we only have seven guys and we have, um, there's not the whole rest of the class is, uh, girls. So, I mean, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't bother me cause we all get along so well. So, cause we all know we're all, we're all on the same boat. There's no, there's no differences. Honestly, I, I think our class gets along really well, Yeah, which is a lot of fun. Um, 
I just but, asked yeah, that I question. Mean, I mean, I, yeah. there's a lot of talk and sometimes it comes up in like the PA groups I'm in on Facebook about how the profession is so much skewed towards females, um, which is interesting because even I think in the past couple of years, it was one of the very first years that more females were accepted to medical school than guys. Mm -hmm. Like it was, I think like 51% yeah. or something. Um, yeah. But I know at my program, they always wanted guys like they mm -hmm. wanted to have more male presence but for some reason it was just more the way they described it was like there's more qualified females applying but like if a qualified mm -hmm. guy applies like we want yeah. him here if he mm -hmm. is a good fit so i was just curious since i graduated a while ago if that had changed mm -hmm. <laughs> at all but no about the same so we had 44 no, I mean, and 11 guys i mean that's kind of like i have friends in other programs and that's kind of how it is yeah i don't think it's really cool all that much yeah <laughs> um, but i mean from what i've heard is that the pa profession was male driven yeah. in the beginning right until about recently and the same thing with medical school and a lot so, of our leadership is is yeah. male which is interesting to me because of i don't know um so yeah. <laughs> just curious how long is the yeah. program uh it's 27 months okay so we'll be graduating in December of 2021. Gotcha. That's not that far away. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> no. I'm really getting, I'm getting excited. My girlfriend actually has a countdown in, <laughs> in her phone, and I looked at it today, and I was like, holy moly, we started at this many days, and now it's only this? Yeah, it's it, going it, to fly. fly. Yes, <laughs> especially once you get to clinicals. Because the how long are y'all's rotations? uh so they're five weeks and it's 15 months okay so we only have a 12 month didactic which i heard okay. is is rare for yeah it is program. yeah ours was the opposite it was 15 and 12 so okay yeah but that rotations are interesting because like ours were four weeks but as soon as you get comfortable somewhere you move on yeah. and it's time for something uh -huh. new and so yeah those fly by too um and as soon as you know it you're kind of kind of done with those but um what has been the hardest class for you so far oh man uh pharmacology is pretty hard farm farm is that's a whole other animal yeah as at, our our we actually have a pharmacist who teaches us pharmacology uh and he he even said it's 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 hard like you have a whole degree on far on being a pharmacist yeah so to really learn pharmacology and in, in your own your window of time for didactic whatever that is it's hard to do yeah it's a lot of memorization at that stage and then it's really not until clinical that you can apply it and understand yeah. it versus when you're just mm -hmm. trying to memorize it and read about it that was mine too. Only test I failed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I haven't done that yet. <laughs> okay, good. You're probably in the clear. It was my very first farm test. And it, well, and I say failed. I got like a 70. I don't remember our cutoff. I think it was 75 and I got like a 74. So. Yeah, that's what I was. Yeah. 75. I'm like, okay, I was close. Come on. <laughs> um, but it was fine. Um, okay, so um you got a little while till clinicals we talked a little bit about this beforehand but with all of this covid stuff y'all have moved to primarily online how has that transition yeah. been it's been different especially with the testing way we're doing it now um do they video you or something yeah they video us so they're we have to set our we have an app uh what is it? it's called it's webex it's like a it's almost like that zoom thing that okay. everybody's using right now but we're, we're we're set into proctor groups and we have to have our phone at such an angle and such a position to make sure that there's no funny business going on it, it like we thought that our tests were strict in the classroom we've taken that uh, about a hundred percent more than how strict it now is oh my gosh it's, it's it's crazy like you have to like show them the whole room you have to show what's on the desk you have to show them your scrap paper front and back you have it, like it 
I'd rather just take a test in the classroom. <laughs> that sounds very intimidating. <laughs> Which was originally what was happening. So we were actually, we were able to be in class taking tests still, but we had to have the lectures outside of class online. So originally we were starting off, we'd come and take our test and leave. And then what happened is as more COVID cases came out, we went directly to online. So it's been interesting. It's been very different than in class. And sometimes it's like, it's a little lonely because you wanna, you have the people that you sit next to and you're, you're so used to just like saying something really quick in class, like a little like joke here and there to lighten the mood. And then you're by yourself and your mic's off so you can't communicate with them as yeah. well. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's different. Um, does it make you wish your, your whole program was online? Like the Yale programs or you prefer the in-person? I'm an in-person type of learner. So, um, I don't know. It's, it's, sometimes it's hard to be online. Like it's hard to be in class for the amount of time you are during school, but then it's, that much harder to do it online because you have like everything else around you you have like you have tv you have you're in a comfortable chair you're you could be sitting on a sitting in a lazy boy relaxing yeah. with your cup of coffee and you barely paying attention um so that's definitely one of the challenges um yeah i mean it, it's just a whole different environment <laughs> Um, hopefully they'll be able to like, get you <laughs> get you back back in the classroom soon is there anything that you found that makes it easier or a little I, I feel like i have more time like i have a little more time to learn material because it's forcing you to go over it mm -hmm. um so so like at least with the way i would study is i have class i'd go work out just to get away from medicine for a little bit and then i'd get back into it um with this i'm able to go right from class to if i wanted to take like a break and just watch tv and study or i could just go straight to working out because once i turn the class off i turn the class off and i can do whatever so it makes my schedule a little bit easier to go around um but yeah for anybody that's going into uh, a program uh, soon, it's it's you're gonna notice that it's you're gonna start on if you start online and you go, then you're in class. It's gonna be really different. You, I think you'll probably like it being in class because you have people to interact with. Yeah. Um, and especially like coming in as a new student, I think that's gonna be a little hard to settle yourself and really get to know everybody just because you, like at least where our program is right now, it's everybody's on each other's side. And, and that's, that's what I've heard about every program so far is that you're there for each other. And I think it's going to be hard. Like you have that moral support from everybody just being with each other every day. So I think it's going to be a little hard in the beginning, but once you, I mean, hopefully this doesn't go on long. So once you get back in the classroom, um, It'll be nice to see everybody's face and really get to know them um, as a person because you'll be with them every single day for as long as your didactic year is. Yeah, well, hopefully you'll get in, in the classroom soon and this won't disrupt too much yeah. for you because, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely tough. Um, well, thank you so much. I'm so glad you got into school and were able to share your story with us. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah is there anywhere where and it, it's up to you if people can send you questions or they can send them to me and I can forward them to you but um, yeah I mean uh, you have my uh, I can you can give people my email um, I'm on Instagram you can shoot me a message um, yeah I'm pretty open if you want to ask me questions and, and get to know what PA school is like what the profession is like what, what just what my life is like <laughs> in school shoot me a message email me any it's it's completely fine okay. i have no problem <laughs> helping people well i'll send them your way i'm sure you, i'm sure you'll get some questions so. <laughs>
<laughs> well, thank you so, so much. No problem. It was my pleasure being on here. Thanks for having me. Thanks. <laughs> All right, I stopped our recording.